Hi. This video is part of a series in which I learn about programming a retro video game on a Commodore 64 in assembly. The code I'm using is from the game that you see right now. It's called Supernatural and it's written by Georg Rottensteiner. You may also know it as Guns and Ghosts. This is not a tutorial, just me learning game programming. Enjoy the video. Yep, it's time for part six of the uh, Let's Program and Supernatural. And uh, good afternoon, uh, video game programmers. Maybe I should start my videos like that. <laughs> uh, last time we did uh, player movement. Um, which Georg Rottensteiner calls a big step. And it kind of was, I suppose, because it has a lot of effect. We're actually moving things on the screen. And uh, today we are doing uh, screen painting. So we're going to define um, our screens and we're going to put them on the, on the, on the display. And you know, we're going to define our levels, basically. Now, I've done that before. I've used um, a, a level design software before uh, and what that does it basically creates a thousand bytes of screen information for each screen and then another thousand bytes for uh, color information uh, but uh, you, you know you're going to run out of memory pretty quickly if you don't do something about um, uh, handling that amount of data so there's a couple of ways one of the ways uh, that i thought was uh, the only way for a while was to use tile based screens where you basically uh, uh, define a number of tiles which are larger than uh, one character they can be a couple of characters and uh, that way you only have to place a small number of tiles on the screen uh, you know may, uh, resulting in a smaller amount of data for your entire game now Georg here uses a different way of doing that um, and all of these things that we see here, so the parameters, let me let me build uh, one so that we have all the all the names, um, the parameters and the zero page pointers because we're going to do a lot of memory copying again. Also, what is important, just as a reminder, that the screen character memory and the screen color memory, um, especially that the screen character memory is below the screen color memory, and I'll I'll. I'll talk about why that is important uh, in a bit. So let's scroll down um, to see what's new in the data section. And there's quite a lot new, actually. Um, so this is the very end of the file. I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling up uh, to the start of the game variables. Now we have a level number, which is a single byte, which is going to hold... Um, this is like a global variable is going to hold the current level number that we're at. Then the sprite positions, we already discussed that, the bit table. And the, then there's this, the screen line offset table low. Now, what is that? That is a row of bytes. Um, and they describe the low part of the address of the first character on each line. This is just uh, all of this calculating that you see going on here is not being done uh, runtime, but it is being done uh, at assembly time. This is all assembler logic. So the result of this is a fixed number. So you could basically see this as a table with fixed numbers. Why does it look like this? Well, because this results in a number that is relative to the start of screen character memory. Which means that if I wanted to use this code for another game or another application, I could just change the screen character uh, byte uh, or screen character word. And uh, this would change with it. And I wouldn't have to change the entire table. So it's, it's portable code. This is just uh, the first character. The next line describes the address of the... Uh, of that same character, but then one line lower, so the first character, the second line, which is 40 characters wide. Um, we're, we're ending it with this to make sure that we get only the low, um, 
the low part of uh, the result. All right, because this is the table of the low bytes. If we scroll down, we of course get uh, the same thing. We get we get the same calculation, screen character, for so, so, but we get the same address basically, but we end it with this. So we get the high bit of that result. This calculation that happens here is a 16 bit result that we get. So we get a result that is two bytes wide. And then at the end, we just shift it right by eight bits, meaning that if we have a 16 uh, bit result and we shift this one eight bits to the right, which is basically one byte, it ends up in this place and we have our high byte and these are all defined as bytes so the table of high bytes and low bytes together they will form one address well um this is smart thinking again using tables and um uh, to to increase efficiency uh, how they are used we'll see in a moment i've just scrolled up uh just beyond the uh, the game variables because we have a screen data table the good thing is uh and, and i've learned this in software engineering of course is that uh when you design anything uh, it's best just to start with considering the data because the data is going to determine how your code is going to work it's better to to start by describing your data and then work the code around it than to write code and and have that determine what your data should look like because this uh, makes it easier to add uh, levels and to uh, uh well to add anything um so how does this work one of these blocks uh defines one level and this game is going to have like one screen levels, right? So we don't scroll off uh, uh, off the screen. We just finish one level, and when that's done, we paint the the next. But this um, we we imagine an empty canvas, and this describes that we're going to draw a horizontal line. This is just a constant that is one. There's also a vertical line that's a constant that is two, but uh, we have an X position, a Y position. We have a uh, a number of characters that this uh, line should be long. And then we have a character number and a color. So each element is described by these, by these bytes. So you have one horizontal line, two horizontal, three horizontal lines, a vertical line, and this marks the end of the field. End is just, well, just zero. So that's one level. I took the liberty of designing uh, my own level. I just put in some values that I thought made sense. Uh, and we have level border data. So this describes the the, the play field, uh, the, the outside borders of the play field. And that is a, a, a separate, it's defined in the same way. Uh, and it's put in on every screen that we draw. And then there's the screen data table, which describes um, in words, I mean, in two byte uh, sections, this is just the, the, uh, the, the address of level one. So if I wanted to uh, draw level two here, I'd make this into a two, and then our world would um, uh, consist of a level two. And I'm thinking, I'm not sure yet, but that this is going to have like a succession of levels and the level number refers to, it, you know, will be an index into this table. But this is what it said. Um, let's just have a quick look at the uh, at the end result. But by the way, um, so that we know what we're looking at, this is what we're looking at. So we've, we've sort of drawn uh, this character on the background and this is the our border data and these are one two three horizontal lines and one vertical line this is just still our player it still moves i just don't have a joystick attached right now so but this is our play field and as you can see there's a little room at the bottom that we're gonna use probably to you know display scores and stuff okay
So how do we do that? Let's look. Let's look. I'm scrolling up and uh, looking for a bit that we know. All right, here. I I'm, I marked it with new here. I'm going to get that out. Um, oh, I, I haven't looked at the exact values here, but we're using a multicolor character sets. Um, I forgot to look at this, but I'm sure that if you looked at this, you'd find registers and when you set values, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, um, I'm going to look at that later and, and add that in, uh, or tell you that the next time, uh, character set multicolors, I guess these are setting the colors that we're using and this is to enable the multicolor character set basically just means that the resolution of your character set goes down um and uh but that you can use uh more than one color in your uh, in your characters no uh, it's, it's it's a pretty uh, uh it's pretty simple actually uh but this is the bit that we're actually interested in now uh we load the accumulator with zero which is the the level number we store that in the level number variable and then we call build screen this is our uh, sprite code and we already know that and i think at the end of oh, the main game loop don't we uh, build uh i thought that we actually i'm scrolling up now uh, that's odd because i thought that we had an actual place where oh wait a minute well let's just go to build screen let's do that so we go we go to declaration we end up at build screen somewhere this uh um this border will uh, will be drawn as well it creates a screen from level data that's it that's what it is so um hmm okay we start with this we load a character and a color and we say clear play screen. Let's see what that does. We go to the declaration. Uh, we set X to zero. We have a clear loop. Start at screen character. Oh, this is funny. I've just discovered something. <laughs> okay, let's go. Um, it's a bug really, uh, but well, it makes the code less uh, less portable. But a screen character, we just use the X as an index and we run past um, all the four pages of the screen and um, uh, up to this value and we just repeat that so the whole screen is filled. This is like the dumb method. This is the slow and dumb method to play this, to clear the, uh, the, the play screen, but I'm afraid it's the only one that we have available. There's no amount of tabling going to help us uh, do anything here. Um, and then we transfer Y to A, although I don't see very quickly now why we would do that, because Y is really, oh, I think Y is a color. All right. Yep. Y, y was, we set Y to the colors. Y, y to A, uh, we set X back to zero uh, because it was at 220 here. And then we do the same uh, exercise again, but for the color. Now, why I just said that I found a bug is that this is hard-coded color map. And you'll see, I think, in the next iteration of the code, I haven't looked yet, that this will be relative as well. Because if I decide to move, well, color memory, you, you can never really move color memory, can you? Hmm. Anyway, later on in the code, there's some mathematics going on to circumvent that. And uh, here it's just hard-coded. So, ah, whatever. We've done that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, sure where we just came from. So, I'm just scrolling back up. This is all the code that we're going to go through. There's lots of comments there. And was it here? Yeah, clear play screen. This is where we came from. And we jump back here. Now, uh, we load the level number. Um, we uh, see this is where, where the level number is loaded into X, and X is here used as the index into the screen data table. So we're actually getting the address of the, um, uh, of the level uh, data. But we get uh, the low 
uh, first, and we put that in zero pointer one. These are all general purpose uh, zero pointers, and we have to keep track of what we just use them for, right? So it's it's a good thing to comment that. So we get the low byte of the address, and the high byte is of course the next one. So we get that from the table, and we store that in zero page one. So zero point zero page pointer one now points to our uh, level data, and we say build level. Uh, oh, and this is uh, after that we do the same for uh, the level border data, but we don't have that in the screen data table. We just use this fixed thing, and this notation here says give me the low byte. This says give me the high byte, and then we put the low byte in zero page pointer one, and the other one in the next byte, and we call the same function build level, and it does the the border data, and we jump out. So build level, what does that do? Well, we can see it right here. We don't have to jump to it. Um, we set y to 255. You know, we're going to use that as an index or a counter, uh, but we do it 256 times. And at the first pass, we see that we increase y, so this uh, jumps to zero. Right. So on the first pass, y goes to zero. So the levels are all coded uh, to save space, and we decode them here. Um, so we get the data from the, from the zero page pointer, not directly, but we, we sort of, uh, uh, use it as a reference and it was pointing to the level data and we index it with Y, which is zero. So we get the first, um, uh, the first, uh, byte that was there and that either we expect, um, uh, a level end. We expect a horizontal line or we uh, expect a vertical line. And if if neither of those are uh, met, then the level is just complete and we end. So we are we've we've encoded our uh, level and where this routine decodes the level. Uh, and we can add things we, we could add um, like uh, uh, diagonal lines or, or, or whatever we we can encode in that uh, in that thing so this is probably where we're going to put all our uh, all our uh, pickup items and, and power-ups and that kind of thing uh, because this will tell us what to draw if it's in character mode so uh, uh, LD end which was zero I think yeah if, if that is if, if we run into that, it's the end of the level, then it's it's also complete. So the most interesting ones are H and V. These uh, draw the lines, right? So we're, let's look at the horizontal line. We have to scroll down because it says line H. You know, if, it, if it compares that value, go to line H. Line H is here. And there we go. We increase Y y is still the index into the level data table um zero page pointer is still pointing at the level data table and we use y as the index so we get the x position right the first one was uh, a code for what we we're going to draw horizontal vertical we're past that now so parameter one because that's where we store it is the x coordinate of where this horizontal line is going to start the next byte is the y we increase y again, we get the width. So how many characters is the line wide? We store that in parameter three. Then we get the character code and then we get the color. Easy enough, right? Now, um, what happens here? Uh, blah, blah, blah. All right, now we are going to set up our zero pointers, uh, zero page pointers two and three to do the character and uh, color uh, copying. So um, let's see. We're, oh, right. X is the uh, Y position. So, and we're looking at the screen line uh, offset, the low bytes of the of the screen, um, uh, the the low part of the screen addresses, and we want the because we're looking at the Y position, we're using uh, the Y position as the index into that table. So we're looking at the at the first um, at the low byte of the first address of the line that we want to draw on, and we add 
da 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 da. All right, parameter y was it? No, that's that's what we're doing. We add the x register. So we we stored that in parameter two because that was a y position. We load that into x and we use that as an index into that table. So we get the right low uh, low byte of the address and we store that in zero page pointer two. And also we store that in zero page pointer three because the low bytes, you know, whether we're drawing in color RAM or a character uh, RAM, uh, the low bytes are going to be the same. It's just the high bytes that are going to be different. So we look at the high byte. We take it that uh, this, uh, and this is based on the screen memory, right? So the screen memory, same, um, same index, so we get the high byte of the correct address, and we add x, and uh, we store that in zero page pointer two. So zero page pointer two is going to be, you know, it now points to the correct screen memory address, but then we have this, and I was looking for, looking uh, at this, and I and I couldn't figure it out at first. You know, the, hence the, uh, the the question marks here. Um, but I get it. Uh, the first thing that I was doing is, is was calculating what this was. But if you have a close look at this, uh, these are all constants. So the result of this is going to be a constant. So why all the all the mumbo jumbo here? This is purely to make the code portable again. If I ever choose to move my screen character memory to a different location. All this does is it calculates the difference um, between uh, the high bytes of these addresses. Remember that this these calculations are all 16 bits, so each two bytes. So we have the, the address of the screen uh, color memory and the address of the screen character memory. If you subtract those, you just get the difference. Um, we do the same math as we did before, so we take you know, we end it with the high stuff, so we get zeros and all the rest, and we shift it to the right. So the result of this is just the difference between uh, those two um, uh, memory locations. Um, and what we've just done is we we add with K. We just clear. This is this is a typical sixty five ten thing. You cannot add. Uh, without using the carry. So you have to make sure that you clear the carry, otherwise you're going to just get another add if you're unlucky. So we just clear the clear the carry and we add. But what, what was it holding? Uh, it was holding uh, this value. So it was holding the low... Oh, this is holding the high byte, of course. It was still holding the high byte of the screen address, and we're just adding the difference. So this results, um, you know, if, if you, uh, I, I did the math in our case, just to make it clear, this is the color memory address. This is the, 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 the screen memory address. Um, this results in this number. And we end it with that, which results in this. We shift that to the right, and it's always that. Well, it's logical, because if you, calculated the difference between these these two and you added the difference to this you end up at that again right so that's exactly what happens so you get the correct uh, high part of that uh, color memory address and you store that in zero this is all just to um to set up the pointers that we're going to copy to and this code is now uh a portable you can you can change the screen um uh, the location of the screen memory, uh, and it would still work. Otherwise, it would have to remember that, oh, I'm using that address somewhere. I have to. Now, why we wouldn't just store D8 in this memory address, I'm not so sure. So maybe maybe I'm getting it wrong. You know, maybe if someone smarter than I am uh, uh uh, can tell me if 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 that is you know if if I'm wrong or not, but uh, that's what I thought what was going on here. Uh, maybe it's just trying to be extra fancy where it's not needed. Um, just you know, take this entire detour to get up, you know, to get to a result that we already know. Um, 
uh, because we're not going to be able to move the color memory address, are we? Uh, again, uh, another thing that I thought is that if this works as long as the uh, the screen memory is below the uh, color memory. If it goes above, this math will fail, and you, you'll just get an error here. So, I don't know. You know, I figured out what it does, and I figured out why I think it does that. But in the end, it just sets up the pointers uh, because we're still uh, working on copying um, our stuff. So, uh, we save the index to the uh, data table because we're going to use it for, for, for drawing uh, the characters, actually, and we push it to the stack. So we, uh, you can't push the Y register directly onto the stack, so you transfer Y to A, and then you push A onto the stack. So all we have to do next is pull something off the stack, and we'll get the, uh, the correct uh, uh, index into our data table again. Um, we uh, make Y the X coordinate, because that is what we were pointing at, um, we make y uh, we make a the the parameter four, which was the the character that we were going to draw, and we just store the character that we were going to draw to the zero pointer address, which was the character memory plus y, because that was the x coordinate. Same here uh, for the color zero page pointer three now points to the correct address plus y. You know we 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 put the character down we. Put the colors there, and then we increase y and decrease uh, parameter three, which was the number of characters that we're going to draw. And we have a small loop here that goes through the number of characters that we uh, intended to draw for this line, and we go to jump next level data. Remember, uh, also note that this is a jump and not a subroutine, right? So we're not using JSRs. We're using, we're jumping around in our code actually. This is officially spaghetti code, you know, but just by definition, we just know what we have to keep track of exactly what we're doing. We're working with global variables here, so we have to. This is this this can be very hard to debug. You know, if you're programming like this, it can be very hard to debug because you don't always know uh, if you know if 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 you're not uh, super smart, you don't always know what the values of of each uh, um, each parameter and each uh, memory location is going to be. So you're going to need a debugger to actually find that out. And then you'll find, oh, shit, I forgot to initialize or I forgot to do this. That's the way uh, programming goes. So we pull uh, A off the stack. We know that we just push that on. So, you know, it's been safe on there. Nothing's happened to it. Um, uh, remember that if we do jump routines, uh, you know, do subroutines, we use the stack to store addresses and stuff. But we haven't done that, so... We pull the accumulator off the stack, which was the index into our data table. Um, now, uh, buh, 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 buh. Um, at some point, we may want to build um, uh, build levels that are larger than two hundred and fifty six bytes. You know, we've we've uh, made our level data small. But there's nothing on it, you know. Uh, normally, a level would be a thousand bytes, but we've made it small by a large, uh, you know, by, by a large factor. Uh, but it may grow beyond 256 bytes. So we have to make sure that when we go through, you know, as we go through our level data, that we don't go past uh, a page boundary and we wrap back to the beginning of the table and start drawing our level again. You know, we have to make sure that that doesn't happen. So. What do we do? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Y was the index. We clear the carry because we're going to add, and we add one to our uh, our location, uh, to, to our index. Now, um, when you add with carry, this is a very, this is the, uh, the, you know, very much the intended way of working with the carry. If this calculation uh, that we're doing right here, so if the index was 255, you know, if the value was FF and we added one, the result would go uh, uh, in the accumulator and it would go back to zero. But because it's wrapped around, you get the add and it adds the it adds the carry as well, right? So that's the, the whole function of a, of a carry, you know, that you, you keep that in mind. So this is 
different than just increasing the um, uh, the index, we add one with carry, and that in that way we can check, or you know, we have the CPU check basically uh, that if we wrap around, we add a carry. So we do that to zero page pointer one, uh, zero page pointer one, which is still pointing to our level data, uh, and we store that back in there, and then we do the same for the high byte where we add zero, we're not adding one to the high byte, we're adding one to the low part of this byte. But we also have to check the high, but if, if the low part resulted in a, a carry, then we have to transfer that carry to the high part. So we add zero, which doesn't appear to do anything, but we add with carry. So we're adding the to the accumulator zero plus the carry. The carry was set out of this operation. It would actually add one, which is the next page, and which would actually make sense. So we've set our zero page pointer in the level data. We've increased it by one basically safely. And we set Y to uh, the 255, and we go back to the next, uh, to, to the level data loop, which was up here, which is basically just the beginning of our loop again. So we've we've done uh we've done what we need to do uh all we haven't done is look at uh line v let's look at what that does but it basically does exactly the same thing uh zero page point of one uh is still the level data we get the x position y position the height in this case the character and the color Exactly the same thing happens here. We store the target pointers to screen and, and, and color RAM. We, we did that. It's exactly the same code. Um, uh, and then we start doing this. Of course, something is different here because we're not drawing a vertical line. Uh, we're not drawing a, a horizontal line, but a vertical line. So we add 40 to the location of where we are going to draw next, which is the you know if if i if i'm on a commodore 64 screen i stand here and i count 40 characters uh further from here i end up at this one because the screen is just 40 characters wide um so that's why you can add 40 and um uh the, the I'm, I'm i must say that i'm not entirely sure why we are checking for page boundaries here you know, this is this is the the same tech uh, the same technology. I was going to say the same solution as we did before. You know, like it's a safe increase, but why do we check for a page boundary cross here and not in the horizontal line? Why could a why could a, a horizontal line not cross a page boundary on screen? You have to, you know, the 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 screen of a Commodore 64 is a thousand bytes long, so you can only have like a counter count 255 bytes, and you have to do that four times to get to a thousand. So it's gonna run into a page boundary somewhere. So we're checking that. I I I can be, you know, I can I can understand that it would happen sooner when you did a vertical line because you're more likely to cross a page boundary that way but we're actually checking for it here but if you, if we go back to the uh, it, this is just uh, this all of it you know this uh, the rest of the code is all the same but why if i go back to the horizontal code if i go back to the horizontal code where are we where are we i'm sorry i'm uh, I, I may be confusing you with all the scrolling now oh maybe i am doing it see Am I doing it? No, it's this. It's this. This next character code. This is the next character code for the horizontal bit, like line 392. I'll set a breakpoint. And the next character code vertical, it has this uh, page boundary checking. So why is that? I'm not sure yet. But uh, uh, this could just be a bug. You know, it could, uh, if, if I work out a, a place where this, uh, uh, where this goes across, because we're, we're just increasing, uh, Y here. And if Y is, uh, 255 
when we start, it just goes to zero. And how's that going to uh, how's that going to work out? There's no check here. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try and <laughs> try and work with that. Um, maybe uh, we can do that. Uh, uh, by the way, that's all the all the code that we have to go through. So if you if you you know if you've had it, we've been going thirty five minutes. So if you've had it, then uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, but I'm gonna do a little bit of an experiment, and I'm going to draw. Where are we? There. I'd already made my own level. So if I'm I'm going to draw level two, I'm going to draw a horizontal line. Oh wait a minute. Oh, I can't. Oh, that's why. <laughs> I can never use an if if I if I I uh, I couldn't. Well, I'd have to. Hold on. Just thinking out loud here. Oh, yeah, hit the hit the mic there. Um. Uh, now let's just do uh, standard. What would give me a number that is close to 255? Two, to three, four. Uh, by 46. So if I, six times 40, six times 40, X position, that would, well, the X position wouldn't matter, but it's it's on line six. So if I, right, if, if I started on line zero, and I ended up on line six, so that's six times forty. I would end up there. So if I, uh, I'm going to draw a horizontal line. I'm going to not draw all of these, but it's just. I'm going to draw a horizontal line on X position. One, Y position six, and I'm going to do that for 30 so that six would result into six times 40 which is 240 and then 30 characters after that this is definitely going to go across the page boundary so i let's see what happens build and run here we go oh, it just works <laughs> it just works so i'm i must be seeing this wrong there must be some implicit way let's uh do this a couple of times just in case I just didn't I, 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 I didn't get the math right. Oh. So on line uh, five, six, and seven. So we have you just have three lines, build and run. No, it just works. It just works. So I'm. I, I, there's something that I'm not seeing right. Maybe, uh, hopefully, some some of you guys can uh, can work it out. I'm gonna certainly have another look at it, and I'll come back in the next video if I work it out. I probably will. Uh, and I, I thought I had it, but I don't. So, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, please comment. Uh, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye. <laughs>